is my, he is my guest, Antonio Damasio. His new book is called Self Comes to Mind, Deconstructing the Conscious Brain. He is the Dorn Seif Professor of Neuroscience at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, also Director of the Brain and Creativity Institute there. He joins us in our studio here in New York. Always a pleasure to have you back. Always a pleasure to be back. So what happened? What happened that you had a right? What happened in your consciousness that you decided what you knew about consciousness was wrong? Well, a, a mixture of two things. First, new facts. Mm -hmm. And second, uh, a lot of reflection on old formulations and on the new facts. Uh, so that, that's the way science works. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, there were new things to add to the kind of machinery we have in our brain with which we construct the self, which is really the essential uh, part to the making of a conscious mind. Um, and uh, there, were all, there was also a great dissatisfaction with the fact that I had not, even to myself, uh, can, can be con entirely convinced that feeling uh, was playing the role that, in fact, I think it is playing today. So I think that to deal with a problem that in order to be conscious, we need to feel our representations, and that plays a key role in the construction of the self, uh, I wrote this book, which is really a putting together of right. a, a variety of those new findings, especially over the last decade. Yes. Um, feeling. There was not enough in it, in consciousness, you're saying? There was not enough of it in of it. my in my previous formulation mm -hmm. i i had given it importance but not the importance i think uh, i see it having today and th th there's a, there's an element of the construction of the self uh, that i actually call primordial feeling uh, which i see as very much tied to this very deep connection between the brain and the body and which i also see as occurring at a very low level in the brain, uh, mm -hmm. to be quite specific, in the brain stem. Uh, and this, too, is something different from what is commonly thought about yeah. uh, in relation to consciousness, yeah. because most, most people will see consciousness as something extremely complex, which it is, uh, and something that is tied to humans, which it is not, because it's not only humans that can have access to consciousness or minds for that matter. Uh, and they tend to associate those very complex processes to the cerebral cortex because we all know that the cerebral cortex has had a huge expansion in humans and it is far more complicated in its uh, system organization than in other species. So you tend to push things up to this very top right. of neurobiological evolution when in fact uh, it's obvious that the cerebral cortex plays a critical role, but it plays that role in partnership with the brainstem. And here, what is very important to think about is that the brainstem is a very old structure. It's a structure whose role has been that of uh, uh, running, managing life within an organism. Uh, and the kind of brainstem we have is basically one that has a design that goes all the way down to reptiles. Mm. So, you know, we have sort of uh, humble origins in terms of this process, but there you are. And so you're saying all these years we've been selling that very primitive area of our brain too short. Exactly. And how is is it a is there a part of consciousness that it contributes to, or is it in the, in the essential being of consciousness? It the, 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 there are parts of consciousness that it contributes to, and in essence, what it does is something that, for lack of a better word, I would describe as the near fusion of body and brain. Um, again, we tend to look at body and brain as two very mm. separate things, uh, and they're not, because to begin with, why is it that we have brains? Why is it that, that the construction of brains right. prevailed in evolution and it was selected so positively? Well, because brains help manage life. The, the, the problem that we as living organisms face, and not we only humans, but any living organism faces, is the management of life. You know, you need to deal with uh, defending yourself against a variety mm -hmm. of dangers, endorsing opportunities, uh, taking care of this life cycle, uh, which requires that you procure energy, that you incorporate it, transform it, and on and on until death, as commanded by genes, makes you die. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this management has gotten to be more and more complex as both environments 
and organisms get to be more complicated. And so at a certain point, it was very expedient to have brains and organisms that had that faculty, the faculty of having brains to make representations, to make neural maps, and to organize life with the help of those maps were obviously organisms that survived better and that, you know, continued mm -hmm. on to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, the brains emerged as a way to manage, guess what, the body, mm -hmm. life in the body. And eventually, the same thing has happened in terms of consciousness. Uh, minds by themselves, which are one of the main products uh, of the brain, uh, are extremely helpful to organize responses. Uh, it, if you have a map, for example, of what's out in the world, uh, you will have a better chance of picturing both a threat or an opportunity that you can endorse, for example, in terms of food or mating or what have you. Mm -hmm. But if you have, in addition to having a mind, if you have the possibility of being concerned with the mind that you're having and with the problem that you need to solve, which is that of your life, then you have a step up. And I think that the great triumph of consciousness comes from this fact, is that having a conscious mind, which really means having a mind with a self in it, therefore the, the title of my book, Self Comes to Mind, when you have that, you, you generate a concern for the problem you're facing. And that concern yeah. is running life, managing life in a, a living organism. Uh, you know, it's hard because I don't, I don't think that many of us take the time to differentiate between these terms. Yeah. Mind, self, consciousness. Correct. They sort of think they're just synonyms yeah. of one another, but yeah. you're saying they're not. Well, I, we, 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 should, we should make an effort not to have them as synonyms and try to, to, to cre create a definition mm -hmm. that will help us in, in terms of the research. It's, can, can you do, can you, if I ask you to define consciousness, could you give me 30 words or less on what it is? I don't know about 30, but, <laughs> but, but let, let me try in steps. 30 uh, 40. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah. the ability to create representations of the world within mm -hmm. and of the world around an organism, that's number one. Second, the ability to make those representations felt. Because, you know, you could generate a lot of representations in a very nice computer, but the question is that our representations are felt. There is a feeling aspect that is attributed to any thought you have, any image you create. And then the, the ability to have those representations with a certain perspective and with a sense of ownership. And it is when you combine the feeling aspect and the ownership, the fact that you know that you have a mind and you own that mind, and a certain perspective which is unique to your organism because, you know, if you think of your head as a, a camera equipped with uh, sound devices, right. sound detecting devices, that is the source of the perspective that you have on the world. When you roll those things together, then you generate a self and then you have this process of consciousness. Should we not expect other animals who have all the same parts of our bodies that, to have their own consciousness then? I think we should. Uh, and in fact, of course, you, you will you will tell me how do you know? Obviously, no animal is going to answer the question: Are you conscious? Uh, mm -hmm. they, they cannot do that because they do not have language. However, uh, we can triangulate the problem in the following way: If you are in the presence of an organism that behaves in a certain situation in ways that are similar to the way we would behave, number one, and if the brain of that organism contains all the parts that we think are necessary to construct consciousness, then I think we have to assume or presume that that organism can have a mind and consciousness. Um, and, and I think it is a good assumption to, to have. It's perfectly obvious that it is not going to be a consciousness of the kind we have in terms of scope. Uh, because animals will have a limited amount of what I call the autobiographical self, which you and I have in spades, uh, and which allows us to have a full sense of the narrative arc of our life from beginning to where we are today, and something quite unique to humans, I think, the possibility of having already a sense of what the future may be. Uh, you know, I, I can't mm -hmm. imagine that, you know, your dog is going to be very worried about Christmas presents or what he's going to do for vacations. But 
some of us are. Uh, and we have a plan of what we're going to do tonight or right. over the weekend. And that plan is, in fact, our anticipated future. We 